Good day and welcome everybody, it's Duckfield, gonna bring you some Heart of the Swarm Terran vs Zerg action here today. It is going to be on uh, actually one of my favourite maps, I don't know, do you guys reckon this is a pretty cool map? It's Neo Planet S and starting up at the top right hand side is our red Terran player, of course from Team Root, it is the Ognis. He's going to be playing against a, uh, a very young player down at the bottom left hand side who has made his way up into the GM League in North America. It is Jon Snow. There you go, not even, there you go, his name's not even Taylor, he knows nothing, but, uh, and speaking of Game of Thrones, oh my god, it's like an hour until the next episode of Game of Thrones is out, so I figure, why not cast some stuff before, uh, we get all of that rolling, because, uh, you know, that show is just absolutely awesome, don't want to miss it, hope you guys also enjoy the show as well, it's really, really fun, uh, but, uh, yeah, of course, Neo Planet S, a really cool map, I, I do like, uh, some of the ways that this plays out, of course, there is the, uh, the, the gold bases in the middle, you don't often see these taken, of course, you see, uh, there were the odd, uh, very daring match from some of the Zerg players in Pro League when this first, uh, when this map first came out that would, uh, would, try and take a sneaky base in the middle there and, and try and make it so their opponent didn't see that coming at all and then have this ridiculously powerful economy coming up. And, you know, apart from that, I haven't actually seen too many games where the gold has been taken. So, um, of course, I think there was... Was there one in... I think uh, a little a little while ago in GSL where there was that amazing TVT. I can't actually remember the, the details of it, but either way, uh, we will see Ognis just coming straight across. He actually sent this uh, SCB straight over and has gotten an eBay block going down uh, on his opponents. So Jon Snow will have no way to get that expansion going up for quite a while. Of course, the eBay, a wonderful tool, tool to use to try and block off your opponent's uh, quick expansion there. While he's getting an e uh, his own barracks back at home, we'll probably see him look towards getting a fast expansion. What he wants to do here is just say, you're not allowed to take your expansion, and I'm going to take mine, and we'll see how you try and deal with that. So, it will be interesting to see what Jon Snow is going to do about this. Of course, he does have some gas coming out of that extractor. Spawning pool just about to finish up, and we'll probably see a very quick uh, speedling opening coming out of the Blue Zerg. So, uh, as I was saying, like, uh, in, pre in some of the previous videos, uh, we've got some new content coming up on the channel here on youtube.com slash duckfillelol, so make sure you are subscribed. I am going to be doing some things with, uh, predictions for tournaments that are coming up, little previews perhaps as well, maybe even some highlight videos. If you guys want to send me some, uh, some replays where you've got some really interesting battles that occur, then I am certainly looking for some more of those kind of things, and I'll be putting together maybe some little montage things, not necessarily long, sort of, uh, you know, very, uh, long drawn out ones but just some interesting ones if they are out there so please feel free to send those through to duckville lol uh, at gmail.com and i'll be happy to see what i can do about that of course as usual if you would like please feel free to send me your replays if you've got a uh, really interesting game of course we haven't had uh, too many mirror matchups i haven't really had too many tvts to work with i haven't had too many zerg versus zerg matches either of course we were we did do some live casting last night on uh, on my twitch channel twitch.tv slash duckville lol did the C Masters Cup, where we saw some really, really cool games, had quite a lot of viewers coming in watching some of the content there, it was a whole lot of fun, and uh, of course, make sure you stay tuned to my Twitter, of course, where you can find out when I'm doing some live casting, and as well as that, I also do some streaming over on The Handsome Nerd on their channel too, so lots of stuff coming out these days, and I'll do what I can to make the content as good as possible, and as exciting and entertaining, and all those kinds of things. Speaking of exciting and entertaining, we do see uh, Ognis just scaling through, wants to see what is opponent is up to, saw that there was that, uh, the extra hatchery going down, it looks as if Jon Snow is also going to take this one just towards the top left hand side, perhaps a little bit of a, uh, a, a little bit more of a secretive base, you don't often see players take that base, a lot of the time, the, uh, the Terran, uh, the Zerg players, I should say, will take this one here, there's a little bit, a little bit easier to protect, of course, there is just the ramp here, and with those very mobile Zerglings, of course, with the speed coming out, you can protect these areas here, which can be quite vulnerable to attack, they can come through here, and of course your opponent can come through this area as well but uh with the with the zerg you often see them actually take that third base down towards the southern side so it looks like Jon snow just changing things up a little bit while for our terran player from root gaming the ogness is going to throw down his second orbital command a third is also being built right now so he's just going to move he's just going to move into a very uh a very eco based play here and uh, Ognis is going to be very careful. A few lings are out here just trying to deflect any attempts at an expansion, but that's not going to happen. A couple of Marines on the top of the ridge there able to force those lings back. And we'll see this bunker finish up. So, looks like uh, 
The Orkness is not going to go for, you know, the normal sort of wall off. A lot of players like to put their wall off just over here, like your bunker, your supply depots that go down, and uh, then you're sort of protected in all of this area back here. But he's actually going to have the bunker back here, a little bit more of a defensive position. Of course, you did see this in Wings of Liberty quite a lot, where players would uh, make sure that their ramp was covered, the mineral line was covered, and a little bit of the front there as well. But he is going to be uh, able to move out now with uh, with those Hellions, going to try and find some map control just right now, going to push down. Maybe kill a few of these links. We'll see how much damage he is able to get. Of course, as we can see, the worker count starting to grow for Jon Snow. He's up at 54 supply, a little bit blocked, but fixes that up. And now he's going to go up to a uh, whole lot more with those links coming out at first because he wants to make sure that this is uh, these Hellions don't get too much damage done. And of course, with link speed already done and ready to rumble, those links should be okay uh, to deflect these first couple of initial Hellions. And now we'll see what Ognis is going to do about this. Got some Widow Mines coming out. A couple of Hellions, uh, a couple of extra Hellions did come about to try and help out. They're not across the field just as of yet. They're still back at home, making sure making sure they are protecting any against, against any sort of run by attacks that may occur. But it looks like he is going to be forced back quite a lot of those links now, just chasing after the few Hellions that are here. But those secondary packs of uh, the pairs of Hellions catch up with the rest and they are able to burn down quite a lot of the links. So we will see Ognis stabilized for the moment. He's going to continue to bring out a lot of those SCVs, the mules coming about as well, and uh, we'll probably see this just move into a standard sort of uh, transition into the mid to late game. So, Terran versus Zerg has obviously started to go the way of uh, Marine, Medivac, and Widowmine. Also, the Marauders thrown in from time to time, but of course, these uh, these guys burrowed in the ground here, the little secret bombs just uh, sitting there. Of course, the Terran version of a burrowed Baneling are very, very powerful. They can do a lot of damage on a single target, and of course, splashing across the secondary targets and uh, doing quite a lot of damage, especially against Zerg. So, what we come and see these days is a lot of uh, people will try and run through, do some drops, and and, uh, you know, medevacs would go through with their ignite afterburners, do some drops uh, while the various units sort of build up. The marines, the medevacs, and all those uh, those mines as well. They start to build up, and the Terran looks towards this sort of mid-game push where 2-2 two -two is available, and uh, you can be you can do some really, really strong timing pushes. But, of course, one of the main things you see Terrans do is really try and cl cripple the Zerg economy. They want to keep a Zerg down on three bases if possible. As we can see, the Ognis is going to look to try and take his own, own third base bases right now and uh, he will be able to at least get the command center over there but I'm just a little bit worried about some of these links now coming across we can see that uh, centrifugal hooks is also being researched by Jon Snow back at home getting that up and running a spire also on the way along with plus one to melee and carapace upgrades so he is going to look towards a uh, mutiling bane style here just trying to take control of the map with a lot of uh, those mobile units so uh, I think that is uh, going to be the plan here for our uh, Blue Zerg plan. Looks like he is going to get started with some of that creep spread. Perhaps a little bit behind here, but not to worry. We'll be able to uh, start working that in. And in fact, he's going to get a little bit busy with something else right now. Centrifugal Hook's still not actually done yet. And the Banelings now more forget. We've got 14 Banes in total. The Spire just about to finish up. More Zerglings coming about as well. And the Ognis is starting to spread himself a little bit thinner, of course. Looking towards taking a third base. This means that your uh, defenses are spread a little bit further. As we can see, we've got Marines. We've got a few Mines and these kinds of things all spread out across this side. But uh, what is here at the front door to protect apart from a couple of Widow Mines? And now we can see one of the shots from the Widow Mines is actually stoked up. The Hellions just, uh, or just a couple of units came across to try and get some damage done, but I think Jon Snow is about to go for the attack here. Nine muters are about to pop out. Zergling, the uh, Bailing Speed is about to finish up a plus one on the armor as well, and I think he's just getting prepared for a, a flanking attack as well. Got some links that are going to come through from the left-hand side of the map. Looks like they're dragging out some of the Terran units out of position, and he's going to come through the back. A Widow Mine with its shot not actually ready, but there it is. It does get prepared but the Banelings knock down that Widow Mine before it is able to get a shot off. And now Ognis forced to retreat to the high ground here. Will he be able to take advantage of this? It's going to be very difficult with those Banelings rolling through. Of course, the Banes have got their 1-1 one, one, and uh, they will be doing quite a significant amount of damage. And now we can see the Mutas are going to flock through as well and uh, see what kind of damage they can do. But Ognis, he's got 1-1 one, one on his own units here. The Marines trying to stem back, trying to get out of danger. Now the Widow Mines just burrowing here. Another good shot from one of the Widow Mines of the Ognis, keeping him about for the time being. And with those Marines coming out of about nine at a time I think the Ognis will stabilize here and of course with it, if he can keep his third base up and running as well as we saw the uh, the command center didn't really take too much uh, damage there so it looks as if he will be able to keep his third base at least for now 
and has forced his Zerg opponent back. So we'll see what Jon Snow is going to do. Looks like some more Banelings coming about, making sure that he has enough defenses in case of a counter attack from the Terran player. And we can see that Ognis is well prepared to do that kind of thing. We may see him pick up and go for a little bit of a drop right here. We certainly do have quite a few medevacs available. Four in total with a couple more popping out. He does have uh, all five of these racks inside the main base. In fact, they all, uh, well, almost all have reactors there, just one with the tech lab. So looks like we will see a couple of sacrificial links floating through from Jon Snow while he rolls through with the rest of the Banelings and the Lings, just trying to come across Ognis with a bunker and a uh, center tower going up, trying to sort of establish a position there in just between his third and the natural base. But the Mutas now floating about. They're going to just roll through and the, and the Banelings tear apart the SCVs that were at that base and Ognis forced back down to 62 SCV. So not exactly a, uh, a successful sort of attack there for Jon Snow, but he certainly did cut down some of those uh, those SCVs that were at that base and now he is actually bursting his way inside the main base a few Marines will come along They don't have uh, well. They've got two two now actually so they do have some really decent upgrades But uh, the Mutas of course very mobile units very fast and very uh, very good with their regen as well as we can see The Muta counts dipping down a little bit down to 14 some more will come through But there is a drop down at the natural of Jon Snow the Ognis just trying to do his best to get some uh, Some counter pressure going while he tries to get rid of this big Muta cloud so he is trying to still do a little bit of that damage, but now the Marine count, the, the Mine count is also starting to really, really boost up, and it looks like uh, Ognis has found yet another weak spot here. The Worker count of Jon Snow down at 65, so not exactly a, a uh, not exactly a terrible amount, but still he might want to have that a little bit higher at this point, especially at the point of the game that we are at. Ognis now moving forward. We've got some Borrowed Mines getting ready to defend this push. Marines slowly pushing forward. They don't want to go too heavy and too fast, because of course if you send them all through through uh, on top of those uh, Widow Mines, then you could actually have some uh, team kills with the Widow Mines, but it looks like we'll be able to come through the M Mutas soaking up quite a lot of damage there. Now forced to move back, Banelings and Lings coming across, of course, on creep, very dangerous to try and maneuver against all of those Lings and the Banes, and Ognis is forced to retreat for the moment. He's going to be able to uh, run back to the protection of a Widow Mine here. We do see one hit go off, another one comes out and disposes of a huge amount of those Lings, and it looks like the Ognis will be a little bit uh, under the weather there, but he is able to force it all back, of course, with 3-3 on the way for his upgrades, plus 2 on the armor for those, uh, those Widow Mines about to come out, which is, uh, you know, an interesting thing to see, of course, you know. Uh, normally we see tanks out at this stage, Wings of Liberty, you used to see Marine tank and this kind of thing because it helps protect, but uh, you know, the Widow Mines, they, they can do so much damage, they're a little bit like, uh, you know, just sort of taking a, a, a risky bet sometimes where uh, initially in the early stages where you've only got a, a few, a smaller amount of them out at the moment, uh, as we can see, just four out on the map, but once you sort of take them up, the risk becomes a lot lower. You start to see really good hits from those uh, from those Widow Mines, and they start to do really good amounts of damage, and of course protecting you from various sorts of things. So speaking of those various things, it looks like the Muta's going to float through towards the backside of the natural base, find a turret, but easily able to dispose of that. The SCV's forced to retreat. The Marines also on their way back home to try and defend against that Muta threat, and the Ognis will force it back for the time being, and the worker count still sitting pretty good for both players. Of course, a Terran player on three bases is not too too worried about the situation that he's in right now. He's got some Widow Mines out on the map. He's got a lot of Marines. The 3-3 is just about to finish up. And with the Medivacs continuously pumping out, he's going to have all of that regen that he needs to try and make sure that his uh, his units are, do are uh, continuing on in the fight. And Ognis still trying to find some more spots to drop inside the main base and the natural. But unfortunately, the Mutas do catch him out. So we'll see him uh, lose that drop. But up at the top side, he is getting a double drop inside the what is attempting a fifth base up the top for Jon Snow. Looks like this uh, hatchery will go down. A couple of marauders along with all those marines as well doing a huge amount of damage. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, Widowmines in position there to block up some of those units and they take down a huge amount of those lings. The hatchery up at the top did go down. The middles will sweep through to clean up this attack, but that is a quite a sizable victory there for Ognis to be able to take down that fifth base and now opening himself up to be able to push through into the fourth. And as we can see, the Banes of Jon Snow now come 
coming about. He's going to see what he can do, but excellent splits from the Ognis. Keeps the majority of his Marines alive. That was some excellent work by him. And now with a couple of forces inside the fourth base, he will be able to get some more damage in there. Continuing to push across the top side of the map. Picks up a couple of those units, and now he's going to try and drop inside the main. Dropping off those Marines to see what damage they can get done. Stimming up, trying to find a Queen to pick off. Looks like they won't be able to get the Queen, but across the top, as we said, more units. Now just continually pushing through. This is that very heavy pressure based style this really um this kind of style that we're starting to see out of the Terran players where they're just focusing on just continually pressing pressuring the Zerg to make sure that they're not mining as efficiently as they would want to be they're spending more of their larvae on getting uh, their defensive units up and running as we can see these Widow Mines if they can get a good couple of trades off on those muters then Ognus will be sitting very pretty he's continuing to produce lots of Marines at a time we've got it should be at least nine Marines coming out at a time not to mention the extra barracks that have been built here as well so he is now still has to retreat from the uh, middle section of the map, but uh, he's going to be very comfortable right now. It looks as if he will try and uh, probably take his fourth very soon. Yeah, that's uh, one of the command centers. He's actually on the way over there. So he's going to look to take a fourth base very soon. Looks like we will need to clean up some of this creep spread too. I'm a little bit surprised he's let these couple of tumors slide. They've been sitting there for quite a while, but uh, he will push up towards the northern end of the map. Looks like the muters and the Ling's going to come across and take care of all of that. But the, uh, the muters now, are well, they going to come through? Widowmine's getting some big hits on on mainly the Zerglings they're getting another big hit on the Mutas as well but the Muta count is continuing to grow up to 24 now for Jon Snow so we'll see is he going to just really commit to a large big uh, a really big cloud of Mutalists or something like that or is he going to look to sort of switch into that later game stage we do have Adrenal Glands on the way 3-3 for the the Lings and the Banes on the ground the Infestation Pit is here offering some of that extra late game tech but it doesn't seem as if he is going for it at the current time now the Ognis is going to try and come through it looks as if that attack was a court. The Muta's on the way, going to be able to deal with that very easily here. The Medivac, of course, very low, taking care of all of those units very quickly as well. And it looks as if Ognis is going to continually block off this fifth base towards the top side of the map. So things will start to shift now that that base is uh, is effectively on hold for the moment. We'll probably see the Ognis now push across towards the bottom side and try and take care of the Zerg's fourth. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, this is a very common tactic that has started to come about for all of these Terran players just continual pressure attacks of course as we can see just small groups of units trying to come across a drop inside the third base going to do some damage here for the Ognis and now these mines moving into position a good defensive position to cover this sort of area here we can see that that's going to block off any sort of attacks that might want to come through this area the first group of links now coming through taking down a reasonable group of those is the first widow mine the extra widow mines down at the back getting taken out by the muters and now as we can see the Ognis cleaned up and uh, it looks like his meta will have to get out of there as quick as they can because there are just too many muters to deal with here but up at the top yet again the pressure continues Yogg now throwing down at the third base here he's got a sizable amount of marines that are available to attack into this base the muters do finally arrive and we'll be able to uh, take that down but another drop goes through and it looks like the Yogg is going to just continue to elicit all of this damage and despite the 14 muters that are being added to the flock that Jon Snow has I am very much questioning if he's going to be able to keep up with our Terran player from Root Gaming right now because the Ognis still continuing to bring out these Marines. We've now got Marauders starting to come out as well because those guys are going to be very useful if there is a switch into Ultralist, which are very popular. But for the moment, the Marines are doing the hero job on the ground. Just so many of them. Stim 3-3 and of course the Magical Combat Shields helping out in their attacks. The Muta's now trying to come through. There are just so many Marines and the while the Medivac count has started to drop a little bit, we can see that the Ognis is just able to do so much damage, put all that pressure on, and uh, while we will lose some of these Marines to the Bane that's floating about, it looks like uh, the Ognis has certainly done the damage that he needed to do. He's taken out that third base towards the top left-hand side. The Mutas will be able to clean up the rest of these forces, but not after suffering a lot of their own losses there. So I think... Jon Snow has stuck a little bit too hard to the Mutaling Bane kind of tech right now. Would have liked to seen some of those Ultras and perhaps even, uh, you know, Infestors or Vipers, these kinds of things. But uh, unfortunately, I think it has all gone too wrong for him right now. He's down at 97 Supply. Does have the fourth base down at the southern side of the map, mining away quite nicely. But uh, unfortunately, his gas is low, the minerals are low, and the Ognis is continuing to go up on high. He's got all of these Marines out now. More Marines and Mines also coming out. So he's got to look to just secure the map at the moment looks like we do have a whole whole bunch of scvs that we're looking to transfer down to the southern right hand side but uh going to be blocked off and now
now. Looks like there will be a big battle towards the middle section of the map. Bane's coming through, but Ogdus just splitting all over the place. See, that is crazy. That is a... He's like a human banana. He is just splitting all over the place, and he is able to keep a lot of those units alive. Not very efficient trades there for Jon Snow. And while these mutas will be able to certainly get some damage done, I don't think that's going to be able to save the day. So, Jon Snow down to 93 supply. Ognis forced to retreat for the moment, but he is going to take this base up in the top left-hand side. And with perhaps this last push from the mutas of Jon Snow... I think that is going to be the end of him. As we can see, Ognis just continually producing all of these Marines. Widow Mines as well, and he's just got such an excellent position. There is a GG. So, Root Gaming's the Ognis able to take a win over Jon Snow there. Hope you all enjoyed that game. It was a pretty cool, a back and forth sort of game at the start, and then it just turned into continual pressure from our Terran player from Root Gaming. Of course, make sure you check out other casts on the channel, youtube.com slash dogville. I'd love to see you all there. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Of course, uh, you know, casters and community members that have been at the, uh, wherever it was, I can't actually remember where it was, but uh, wherever it was for the big announcement that uh, has been a little bit hush-hush, but has been revealed in part uh, recently on Reddit.